Alrighty, thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, and we are on the Gold Coast. And I'm going to drive down towards uh, Surface Paradise and I'm going to hit the waters. There is a really nice uh, waterway down there. And the water are, you know, surrounded by nice houses and nice buildings and skyscrapers. It's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be nice. Can you hear the roar of the Suzuki? So yeah, it's nice being down on the Gold Coast. I've always liked the Gold Coast. It feels nice down here. It always feels like peaceful. I'm having a coffee. I just woke up after my night shift. It's 20 past two. Ah. I'm in the middle of the school rush. Between two and four, parents are picking up their kids from school. And the traffic is usually semi-bad, but it shouldn't be too bad. Um, yeah, so I did my first shift back at Respite and oh, it's so nice to be back. It's really nice to be back. Yeah, they drive a little bit more rougher on the Gold Coast. I keep forgetting about that. <laughs> uh, that guy, he just like flying through the roundabout. So working down on the Gold Coast, it's it's a different vibe down here, and I love spending time on the Gold Coast. You have the beach, you have all these really nice waterways. Like there is so many places where there is like a river system, and then they built like nice houses around it. And it's uh, you don't have that in Brisbane, but here you do have that on multiple places. So. This one looked really nice. Like I don't look at any reviews. I don't ask anyone for advice. The only thing I do when I scout for places is I'm using a satellite image, and then I'm looking at the satellite image, and then I just look where it could be interesting to go. And then according to the satellite image, it looks like there is a access point where I'm going to uh, get in. But sometimes it's really tricky because you might not be able to access the water if it's like a gated community sort of thing. But um, I think we should be good. And it's, it's really nice being back working at Respite. I really needed to come back and have a break. Uh, I've always felt the Gold Coast have always been an escape. It's been a safe place. It's been a place of, you know, a place and you don't have to worry about you know your mundane problems at home because you're not at home you're somewhere else so. and I feel really really blessed that I'm able to you know not only live in Australia but to enjoy two cities and, and stay at this amazing uh, center over these couple of days I, I do really enjoy that I don't know what it, it it's something with the Gold Coast things just feels different here people are different I find people at work are more open-minded than they were in Brisbane so it just feels like it's a different breed of people people here like the nature more they like the water more they like the beach more they they just seem to enjoy nature more and, and you know exercise running but also open-minded and uh, yeah they, they drive nicer cars too so I used to have the nicest car when I used to live in Brisbane and then now I have the shittiest one hands down I've got the most beaten down uh, car but that's okay of course you know that is not what is important you know, people don't like you because you have a big car and a big house and you have fancy stuff. People actually like you less. I find, like at work, I, I get 
I get better liked if I'm humbling myself down and I come with my shitty old beaten up Suzuki Alto. People like that when you like you're not trying to impress, you're not trying to be something you're not. You just you're just relaxed and you know you don't have to be right all the time. You don't you don't have to impress people. You don't have to please them. You you, you can just you know do whatever you want to do and people will gravitate towards that. And also what I find dumbing yourself down a little bit helps a lot. It helps tremendous. If you want to be liked, dumbing yourself down a little bit in the right context, in the right situation, do some stupid mistakes, be playful, make jokes. Yeah, it it really works. But that's where people get it the wrong way when they think that, oh, if I could just, you know, afford this luxury sport car, then, you know, everyone would like look up to me and look at me and see, wow, that guy has it made. But, you know, often it just feeds your ego and, and, and you become arrogant and you think that you're, you know, that, that, that's the bad, that's the insecurity. If you want to have a big house and big car because it makes you feel good, then I would question why is it so that you feel the need to have these things to, to be worthy. And if you're actually thinking about that, then there is a self-image problem. And a lot of people has it. They like it. They want to impress people. It's all about keeping up with the Joneses, you know. You uh, you want to shine, but I'm 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 saying I don't give a fuck. I don't need to shine, and actually I shine more when I don't try to shine. Like it's like you don't you try not to think about an elephant. You know, you really try not to, but because you're actively trying not to think about the elephant, you will end up thinking about the elephant. And if you have this feeling that I need this to feel good, I need this to look good, then I'm wondering why is that so? I was watching this uh, program on the TV with, uh, they were talking about relationship and this Asian guy, he said, yeah, so you know, you got the dream job, you got a nice house, nice car, nice lifestyle, you get the girl, you know? How do you know? If she likes you for you, or if uh, if you like, if she likes you for what you got, and he said, you know, there's only one way to find out. You know, when you're losing that job, and then you're losing the car, you're losing the house, and then she she takes off. That's what happened for him. Um, so when he lost it, he lost the girl, and then he realized like she didn't want him because who he was. She just wanted him because of what he had. And that's a very dangerous path when you're getting friends that are friends with you because you're having things. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Like you should be friends because they like hanging out with you and they like you. And the good thing when you're having friends like that that likes you for you is that I've had friends that were that first breed and what, what came to my realization was when I was confident, when things were going good, they were there for me and they wanted to hang out. But when I was going through some difficulties, they would just take off and give you the cold shoulder. And you know, you, that, that, you don't want people like that. So that is one thing, if you, if you just be yourself and you don't put an act on, then you know, you will attract people that likes you for you and they tend to stick around and they tend to be a lot more fun. Like if you're pretending to be into something you're not into and then you're attracting people that are into that, it's not going to be any fun. But if you're just you and they like you for that, then you two are, are a better match. Red light camera over there. Bastards, ugly fuckers they are. Tram. Spårvagn vi har vid Eva. It's uh, actually the Gold Coast is a bit like Gothenburg. We have the trams 
and people like to tell jokes and people are a bit more laid back and you know it's uh, it's nice but yeah if you're just yourself then that's what you're gonna attract but that's the that's the dangerous path of thinking all the time like pe people see things and resources and money as as almost like an addiction where you know they feel good because they bought something whatever that is you know and then they buy something else and something else and something else and they sort of have to keep buying and then and, and doing these things to feel good and they think somehow if they make more money then you know they would be happy because you know but it doesn't it doesn't make you happy and as, as, as corny and as cliche as it sounds it doesn't because what will happen is, you know, your brain will adjust for whatever lifestyle you have. So if you say Jay Leno, he's an American entertainer and he has his garage and he has hundreds of really nice luxury sport cars. And then say that he has 150 and then he buys number 151 and it cost him a million dollar or whatever the reward he gets from that is a lot less than when I saved a long time to buy a brand new Suzuki Alto for twelve thousand five hundred dollars that was the first time I bought a brand new car in my life and it didn't cost all that much but the kick I got out of it because your reward is not connected to the money it's connected to the effort that you're putting into things so if you have a lot of money, it just means that you have to put less effort into getting things. And usually people make one big mistake. You know, when they get a good job, then they anchor their costs to that income level. So, you know, they get a really good job, but then they buy a big house, a big car, and then uh, like the Swedish singer Peps Persson, He's singing about like you know you, you having such a high standard that you're uh, drowning in bills anyway and what 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 the fuck is that is that really high standards if you're gonna you know stress out so that's what people do or common mistake you anchor your expenses to your income and then you ending up with stressing about money it's just you have you have bigger bills and that's one lesson that I've been practicing uh, for a very long time is that um, I, did, I only used to work 20 hours a week for, for quite a while and now I'm working 50 hours a week and I don't spend much more money than I used to. I, I live the same way, pretty much identical and I don't and, and what I do instead I invest the money that I can put away. I put away uh, on average 60% of my earnings go straight into my investment account and then 40% goes into you know living and bills and also for like saving up for holidays and uh, entertainment getaway stuff like that uh, anything that would break if my fridge breaks or the car needs repair whatever you know but 60% is being uh, saved and that is hard work but it's very rewarding and what you need to understand is like like Robert Kawasaki who wrote the rich dad poor dad book is you know if you can put away one dollar now that one dollar can turn into two dollars three dollars four dollars and it keeps compounding so the more money you can put away over a long period of time will I need to turn on light. Uh, if you can if you can uh, do that then that money will work for you and grow more and more and more so if you could instead of living paycheck to paycheck which is the national sport of Australia in Sweden people are, are better when it comes to saving money and being more frugal but here it just seems like they've never had a bad time they've never had a recession for so long that people 
have never experienced bad times so they, they just living like there is no tomorrow and if anything the government will bail you out and, and they probably will because the government is well aware that people are living on a shoestring and if they wouldn't bail out these people you would have to deal with the consequences which would be crime violence and breakdown so they don't have a choice because people live like this they have to bail them out or you can do like in the US they don't they just instead of giving people money so they can just survive you're on the streets and then you have to commit crime and you have to do all these things to you know make a living that and then you're spending money on law enforcement and hospitals and like it's so much cheaper just bailing people out and just giving them a bit of money to survive to just take away that desperation and I don't know why the US is doing that I guess you know in their twisted mind it's like yeah if we save that money we can you know spend more money on you know going into wars in different countries and you know I don't know it's the US is a really interesting place where you have uh, driving in, in uh, Los Angeles it felt like you could go from a really wonderful upscale neighborhood and then within minutes of drive from there you, you would feel like you would be in, in, in a really dangerous country in Africa like a really like a dangerous ghetto and it's like it's just next to like there is so much money, but it's it, it's not equally spread, and that's what you can see when when you have uh, you get tension in society when uh, the gap between the haves and have-nots is is increasing. So you can see in a country like Australia where the gap is actually very good like the gap is not as big as in most places like everyone is catered to everyone is looked after we hardly have any homeless and, and so 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 on and then you have a place like in the US where it, there the gap is massive like you know you have people living in excess and then you have people desperate and then if you take it even further you have South Africa where you know you have the white people living very comfortable developed life while their black counterparts are living like in deep poverty and that creates so much tension so that's why you see in a country like say Vietnam, Thailand, Laos they are poorer than South Africa they are poorer than America but because the gap between the haves and have not is not that wide because everyone is sort of poor together you don't have the tensions people don't get jealous and people also they just have enough to survive and you know they, they don't need all this stuff but when you have deep poverty next to excess you, you get issues um, yeah I went a little bit off topic there um, we are getting close to my boat ramp if there is a boat ramp I am not sure, but uh, uh, let's find out. It's a bit of wind. <clears throat> uh, need to check the tide as well. I've been lazy because the tide will play a role of uh, the direction that I go. Because you want to use the tide to your advantage, and if you don't do your research and you just hop in and you just go. And then you like oh, it's really hard if you get it wrong and then um, yeah it can be very difficult so yeah this looks pretty good Kelly's Park mm, looks like there is a little bit of a storm I am wondering, can I get in here? I 
don't know. But we shall see.